Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis here with a look at a new fans project line that might be led by a very Jizai designer. This is Code, first release of the Function X label. I got this from Big Bad Toy Store when they put up their Toys for Tots donation campaign pre-orders and was really stoked to open up his gigantic brown box. Seriously, his box is even bigger than a Salter's. What the hell? Code's car mode has a very G1 look going on, with its giant red cannons mounted up top. They even have a joint to stay pointed forward. But I think he looks way better with them off, so... bye bye Now that we've got an unobstructed view, it's more clear just how sleek the shape of Code's vehicle mode can be. For something that's clearly made of a lot of shifted parts, the overall look is very smooth, nicely compact, and just a little 80s futuristic. It rolls well, provided you have everything lined up PERFECTLY! Otherwise, the back wheels may start scraping against the light beige piece right next to their wheel wells. The rolling is also helped by the smooth underbelly of the car, which happens thanks to the fantastic use of the robot mode's mass to form the floor of the vehicle. Opening the cockpit, you can see a little man inside. Lifting the controls and removing him gives us a good look at the driver's console, which even has painted monitors and joystick triggers. Some additional painted detail on the rear or sides of the cockpit would have elevated this even farther, but blue monitors and red buttons are still a nice touch. Taking a closer look at Code's little man, he's a very original take on the Chrome Dome Headmaster, sometimes known as Stylor. There are liberties taken with the color placement, but the homage is clear. I appreciate the number of little details picked out, like the visor and faceplate. This tiny headman's not very poseable, but I'm satisfied enough. Certainly elbows and ball joints might have been stuffed inside, but the upside of this limited jointing is that his alternate mode is dead solid. What alternate mode? Why ahead, of course! <laughs> this take on the classic headmaster transformation works in an awesome hide-end reveal for the face, focused on the optics and nose. As for the rest of the transformation... Code's main body converts in a process that I can, at worst, call incredibly original, but I think it's transforming robot engineering finger candy. The way that this guy changes shape is sublime on every level. His legs are layered panels that hide their pair of wheels well, and his hood literally jumps from one sliding track to another, in a maneuver I've only seen on one other transforming toy to date. Almost nothing feels textbook, and even his arms can do one neat trick of using what could have ended up as car bits on his shoulders to fill out the former cockpit space, which also entirely hides the other pair of wheels. This is what made me fall in love with Code. Even now I have fun transforming him back and forth because it is so goddamn satisfying. Code's robot mode is a slim, mechanical man with boxy shins and a boxy torso. He's got an extremely streamlined look, not wasting one square centimeter of his car mode's mass to fill out a simple, bipedal, humanoid shape. He's also very clearly got Transformers Generation 1's Chrome Dome's color palette, though some odd liberties were taken with the head. I don't mind them, though I wonder why his faceplate ended up red rather than orange. His overall proportions are definitely more subdued in 80s cartoon than the usual dynamic anime flair one expects from fans' project releases, but it is structured so cleanly and intelligently I've really been won over by it. Any trace of his vehicle mode is minimal at best, in a very cool way. He's also got two red firearms, which are... okay? There's nothing really wrong with them, but I find their size to be a bit large compared to the aesthetic Code gives off in robot mode. If they were smaller, I think I'd like them more. As it is, they tend to just lie around and generally go a bit ignored. He's been called a brick by some, so let's see if Code can move. He can. His head swivels from side to side. And weirdly enough, there is a joint so his head can look down. If you swivel this around, unplug him and replug him, kind of, then his head can go the other way. Except the, this thing bangs into the, the back here really easily, so if you fold the legs out of the way a little bit, then he can look up a touch. So, it's interesting, I don't really get why that hinge is there, because it doesn't really do much in either direction. Um, that's one of those cases where I wish we could have a designer commentary on this, because I want to know. Also, his eyes and nose can move like this, so he can go to sleep, and then wake up, and go to sleep, and then wake up, and his... Uh, Narcolepsy seems to have something to do with the shape of his nose, I don't know. His arms are where things are a bit weak. His shoulders are on ball joints, but just a single ball joint with the socket deep set inside the shoulder. What does that mean? That means that his shoulder can only go out about that far. Um, it goes forward and backwards completely fine. It can even cross forwards over his chest a little bit this way. 
if this was a double ball joint, i.e. a stick with a ball and a ball on either end, so a dumbbell ball joint, if you will, then this would have worked really well. Uh, if it was, uh, I guess, like the 3A shoulder joints on some of the World War robot designs. So, that is a weakness that I think could have been averted by using a double ball. I certainly uh, don't think that the single ball approach would have worked any better if they'd cut deeper into the, the shape of this shoulder. It would have really messed with the aesthetics. So, I don't know. If, if there's anything to come at this guy for, it's that. But he does have a bicep swivel. He's got a single hinge on his elbow that has a nicely deep amount of uh, range and bend. And he's got a wrist swivel. You can also move his wrist a little bit like this if you want. And you can keep reclosing that flap to cover for it. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of like a manual mech alive deal, I guess. He also has a waist joint, which is something I really like because... That's part of the magic of that whole uh, chest slide thing, as it's jumping from that track to that track. His hips are on ball joints that have the same problem as the shoulders, though not quite as much. They can go out about this wide. So, again, that's a spot where maybe, uh, I don't know, this this case maybe a slightly larger cut out of this part so that you could fit the stem through it and have this bend all the way out 180 degrees would have been uh, optimal. His knees have a double joint, thanks to the transformation. And his ankles can do that. So his feet can, can go like that. Uh, they can't really go any more uh, forward. And they don't tilt. Apparently that's ruined this toy for a lot of folks. And became an in-joke that I still find funny as of this recording on uh, March the 20-something, 2013. But eventually I'm sure it'll get a bit old. So this guy's posability, it's not very good. I don't think it's terrible. He's still able to assume enough poses to be able to... To do cool stuff like kneel and look off into the distance. So, I don't think he's a brick. I think calling this guy a brick is a little bit misguided. He's just not super posable. He's just adequately posable. So, your mileage may vary there. Personally, I think that the posability is not what you're buying this guy for, as I'll explain very soon. Function X's code caused a lot of discussion in the weeks before and after his release. He's a very new aesthetic out of fans' project, focusing very much on understatement and subtlety. He's not superposable, but moves just enough to feel adequately jointed. Both of his modes are simple and clean, very intentionally avoiding crazy anime proportions. This will put off some potential buyers, for sure. But the payoff is one of the most uniquely and intelligently engineered transformations I have seen in ages. The transformation of this toy is its prime feature, and what you should be buying it for. It's meant to be handled, transformed back and forth several times in a row. The concepts packed into its moving parts intrigue me even after owning him for several weeks. While this guy's standing features may not do it for everyone, those who find satisfaction in the conversion process will get their money's worth out of this sublime car robot. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelus, and I'm hoping to see more out of Function X in the months to come. They've got three more releases, inline, pre-orderable, and etc. And it looks like a couple of them might even have ankle tilts! The world is saved, ladies and gentlemen.